فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم باب وجود الدخول في الاسلام كله وكيف ما سواه وقول الله تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا ادخلوا في السلم الله وقوله تعالى الم تر الى الذين يزعمون انهم امنوا بما انزل اليك وقوله تعالى ان الذين فرقوا دينهم وكانوا شيعا لست منهم في شيء قال ابن عباس رضي الله رضي الله عنهما في قوله تعالى يوم تبيض وجوه وتسود وجوه تبيض وجوه اهل السنه والائتلاف وتسود وجوه اهل البدع والاختلاف وعن عبد وعن عبد الله بن عمرو رضي الله عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لياتين على امتي ما اتى على بني اسرائيل حذو النعل بالنعل حتى حتى ان كان فيهم من اتى امه على نيه ان كان في امتي من يصنع ذلك وإن بني إسرائيل تفرقت على إثنتين إثنتين وسبعين ملة وتمام الحديث قوله تعالى وستفترق هذه الأمة على ثلاث وسبعين فرقة كلها في النار إلا واحدة قالوا من هي يا رسول الله يا رسول الله قال ما أنا عليه قال ما أنا عليه اليوم أصحابي فليتأمل المؤمن الذي يرجو لقاء الله كلام الصادق المشدود في هذه في هذا المقام خصوصا قوله ما انا عليه اليوم واصحابي يا لها من موعظه لو لو وافقت من لو وافقت من القلوب حياه رواه الترمذي ورواه ايضا من حديث ابي هريره وصححه ولكن ليس فيه ذكر النار وهي وهو في حديث معاويه عند احمد وابي داود وفيه انه سيخرج في امتي قوم تتجارى بهم تلك الاهواء كما يتجارى الكلب بصاحبه فلا يبقى منه عرق ولا مفصل الا دخله وتقدم قوله ومبتغ في الاسلام سنه الجاهليه. The author رحمه الله in this chapter he talks about وجوب الدخول في الاسلام كله بالتزام جميع احكامه لا بعضها دون بعض. The obligation of entering into Islam wholeheartedly all of its rulings, not some of it and leaving out some. That's why the author rahimahullah, he emphasized on the usage of the word kullihi, all of it, to clarify to you that it is not pick and choose. You take on what you want and you leave off what you want. And he also rahimahullah, said, وَتَرْكِ مَا سِوَاهُ And leaving off anything besides it. And this is also an explanation of the first part of the heading. Then the author rahimahullah, he mentions eight evidences. He mentions eight evidences. And the first evidence that he started with is Qawluhu ta'ala, the statement of Allah Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dukhulu fi silmi kafa O oh, those of you who believe Udukhulu enter And the qa'idah that we took in usul al-fiqh was what? Al-amru taqtadi al-wujub That the command shows obligation. That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you to do something, it shows obligation. So that means you have to, you're obliged, it's mandatory. Because the definition of wajib was what? ما طلبه الشارع, ما طلبه الشارع. It is what the sharia requests, فعله, the doing of it, على سبيل الإلزام, in a forceful manner. The author, rahimahullah, he's trying to use this ayah to show that it is obligatory to enter into Islam. Because the word here, udukhulu fi silm. Silm here is al-Islam. It is al-Islam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said kafatan. And the word kafah, it means every single one. And it also entails to leave off anything other than it. The second evidence that the author rahimahullah used is the statement of Allah, Alam tara ila alladheena yaz'umunahum Alam tara ila alladheena yaz'umuna annahum amanu And the way that the author is trying to use this verse is what's in the verse which is yuriduna an yatahakamu ila at-taghut wa qad umiru an yakfuru bih The author here is trying to use that part of the ayah as evidence because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions this ala sabili in a form which is ta'ajjub, amazement. They claim iman 
and here they are yatahakamu ila taaguti they are looking for hukum in taagut and taagut is everything that is worshiped besides allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we define this when we were talking about when we were doing thalathatul usul we mentioned that when it was upon them to follow what when it was upon them to follow that which the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam came with and that which the quran has stated so anybody who leaves off taagut they believe in allah and anyone who follows the taagut doesn't believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the third evidence that the author rahimahullah mentions is the verse of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna alladhina farraqu deenahum and there's another qira'a that, that says inna alladhina farraqu deenahum kanu shi'a and ibn jarir al-tabari mentions that the both meanings are the same that they explain one another inna alladhina farraqu deenahum the ones who have divided their religion less minhum fi shay muhammad you have nothing to do with them you have nothing to do with them so those who divide themselves they are not upon ala tariqati muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wasallam allati bu'itha biha they are not upon the path that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam was sent with and the prophet is free from those people anyone who is like that and that person's action is wrong is there any tissue? Jazakallahu khairan. Wa fi'luhu muharram. That person's action is haram what they are doing. And they are going against that which they were commanded to do which is not to divide the religion, but rather to take the religion wholeheartedly, all of it. And the religion, what it requests from you is ahkam shar'iyyatul khabariyya, and also ahkam shar'iyya, which is talabiyya. Ahkams, which it wants you to believe in, which is i'tiqadat, things it wants you to believe in. And tu'mina billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wa liyawm al-akhir wa tu'mina bil qadari khayri wa sharri. It wants you to believe in the six articles of faith. And it also wants to you to come with the ahkam which is talabi that you're requested to do, which is the five pillars of al-Islam and anything else which the Sharia has requested you to do. So those people, they have not entered wholeheartedly to the religion by taking all of that on board. What does it mean tafriquddin to divide the religion? It means ta'zimu ba'dihi wa tikhaduhu shi'aran taking some of the religion and honoring that part of the religion and discarding the rest of the other parts of the religion. وَلِذَلِكَ Allah says in the Quran وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ لَيْسَتِ النَّصَارَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ وَقَالَتِ النَّصَارَ لَيْسَتِ الْيَهُودُ عَلَى شَيْءٍ وَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ So the Christians were saying to the Jews that whatever you guys are holding on to is incorrect. And the Jews were saying to the Christians what you guys are holding on to is also incorrect. When in reality, the truth was divided amongst them. And this is what happens sometimes to the Muslims. Somebody may have something right, but because this person opposes this person, he won't take the truth that's with that person. And the reason why he won't take it is because he doesn't like the person. And this person is holding on to something else which is correct in the religion, but this person doesn't want to take it from them because they don't like this person. And the truth is divided amongst them. So what the person has to do is to take it all on board. The fourth evidence from the eight evidences that the author brought is The day in which the faces are going to glow and the day which the faces will be darkened. And the author, rahimahullah, he brought the statement and the tafsir of Abdullah ibn Abbas. The tafsir of ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas, when he commented on this verse, he said, تَبْيَضُّ وُجُوهُ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ والائتلاف وتسود وجوه أهل البدع والاختلاف أخرجه ابن أبي حاتم في تفسيره ولا لك أي رحمه الله في شرح أصول اعتقاد أهل السنة والجماعة with all of the chains that they brought لا يثبت منها شيء not any of those chains were correctly transmitted from ابن عباس رحمه الله تعالى which is that he said as is attributed to him the face that will glow that day is the face of the people who are holding on to the Sunnah and they united on that. Ahlu sunnati wal i'tilaf. I'tilaf is the opposite of what? Iftiraq. 
They united upon the sunnah. And the ones whose face are going to be darkened that day are the people who are upon innovation and they are disunited. And they are disunited. The reason why always disunity is connected to the innovators and unity is connected with Ahlul Sunnah is because what can unite people is the textual evidences. Is Allah and Qala Rasul. As the poet said, Deenun Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Deenun Deenun Nabiyu Muhammadin Akbaru, Ni'ma al Matiyatu lil Fatal Atharu, La Ta'adilana anil Hadithi wa Ahla, Farra Yulaylun wal Hadithu Naharu, Wala Rubbama Ghalid al Fatah, Athar al Huda, Wa Shamsu Bazira Tallaha Anwaru. The thing that brings people together is Qala Allah and Qala Rasul. And everything else, if it's opinions, then my opinion is different from your opinion. And my brain works different from your brain. And the innovators, since they took their logic and their rationality as their source of evidence, then they differ amongst themselves. And so two of them cannot unite. Then the author, Rahimahullah. So what is the author trying to use from this ayah? What's the dilala? How is he trying to extract the ruling from it? The way he's trying to extract the ruling from it is the ones whose faces is glowing and their faces is shining is because يَكُونُ بِلُزُومِ الْإِسْلَامِ كُلِّهِ It's because they have held on to Islam wholeheartedly. And the ones whose heart, among the ones whose face is going to be darkened are the ones who have held on to part of the religion and they discarded the other part. The fifth evidence which the author takes is the statement of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is attributed to him. The hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, which Imam al-Tirmidhi narrated in his sunan, bi isnadin da'ifin, a chain which is weak. <coughs> that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لا يأتي على أمتي ما أتى على بني إسرائيل حذو النعل بالنعل حتى إن كان فيهم من أمتي أمة علانية كان في أمتي من يصنع ذلك وإن, وإن بني إسرائيل تفرقت على اثنتين وسبعين من الله That the messenger said It will come to my أمة that which has come to بني إسرائيل previously حذو النعل بالنعل step by step until there's going to come a person who's going to have intimacy with his mom in the open. By copying them. And there's going to come a people from my ummah who's going to do, who are going to follow them in doing that. Then the messenger said, وَإِنَّ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ And verily Bani Israel تفرقت, divided على ثنتين وسبعين فرقة into 72 groups. And then the messenger said, وَسَتَفْتَرِقُ هَذِي الْأُمَّةِ And this ummah is going to be divided. عَلَى ثَلَاثٍ وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَةٍ 73 groups. كُلُّهَا فِي النَّارِ إِلَّا وَاحِدًا All of them are going to be in the hellfire except one. The Sahabas, they said, مَنْ هِيَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Who are the ones who are going to be saved? The messenger said, مَنْ مَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ الْيَوْمَ وَأَصْحَابِي Anyone who is upon that which I and my companion, that which I and my companions are upon. So this hadith teaches us that this ummah will imitate and follow the disbelievers. In another hadith narrated by Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, which is in Sahihain Bukhari and Muslim, the messenger said, لَتَتَّبِعَنَّ سَنَنَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ شِبْرًا بِشِبْرٍ وَذِرَاعًا بِذِرَاعًا حَتَّى لَوْ دَخَلُوا جُحْرَ ضَبِّ اللَّهِ دَخَلْتُمُوهُ The messenger said, you will follow the path of the disbelievers. Shibran bi shibr, hand span, hand span. Wadira'an bi dira'a, an arm span. You're going to follow them. Hatta even if they go into the hole of a lizard, you will try to go into the hole of the lizard just like them. And then the Sahabas, they said, is it the Christians and the Jews? The messenger then said, who else? Who else? And today if you look at the Muslims, they want to dress like them, they want to act like them, and they want to be exactly like them. So where, what is the author trying to use from this hadith? What he's trying to use from this hadith is dhikr al He's trying to show you that the ummah are going to be divided. And the way they're going to be divided is akhdu bi They're taking some of the religion وترك and they're going to leave off the other part. So this is a very serious warning. That you, take the, you don't take and pick and choose what you want. 
and leave what you don't want. The second way that the author is trying to take an evidence from it is what? The ones who are saved are the ones who are following the messenger wholeheartedly. مَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ الْيَوْمَ وَأَصْحَابِي The one who is upon that which, an, uh, that which I and my companions are upon. All of it. Because you have to follow the Prophet in everything. You have to follow him externally and internally. The sixth evidence that the author is trying to use here is if تَرَقَتِ الْيَهُودُ عَلَىٰ إِحْدَىٰ أَوْ إِثْنَيْتَيْنِ وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَىٰ That the, Christ, the Jews divided into 71 or 72. The way that the author is trying to show is that the dividing of this Ummah is because they have taken some of the religion and they left off some. Which is exactly the same what he used for the previous hadith. The seventh evidence that the author is using is That there's going to come out in my ummah a people Abu Dawood narrated it wa isnaduhu hasan And the way that the author is trying to use this hadith is, is in three ways. The first two is already mentioned in the previous mentioned hadith. The first part is trying to use from it is already mentioned in the previous hadith. But the next one is ahwa. The hadith states that the people are going to follow their desires. And desires means that the person is going to take what they want and leave off, off what they want. Because Allah says in the Quran, the author by following his own whims and desires. And he didn't let the religion govern him. And the eighth final evidence that the author used is a previous hadith that he already used, which is the three that Allah hates the most is وَمُبْتَغِنْ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ سُنَّةَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ The one who takes in Islam a sunnah of jahiliyyah. And we already explained that what it meant. in بَابُ وُجُوبِ الْإِسْلَامِ بَابُ وُجُوبُ الْإِسْلَامِ We spoke about it. Naam. The author Rahimahullah here, he's speaking about the dangers of innovation, adding something onto the religion, and that it's greater and higher than major sins. Innovation is worse than major sins. And bid'a shar'an, it means ma uhditha fi dini mimma laysa minhu minhu biqasd al ta'abudi. It is the thing that the person adds onto the religion which is not from it with the intention of worshipping Allah on it. Whereas kabira, a major sin, shar'an, what does it mean? Ma nuhiya anhu ala wajhi al ta'adim. Kabira means that which is being prohibited for you to do. And that which the Sharia told you to stay away from and not to do. 
So the major sin and innovation, innovation is much worse. The reason why innovation is worse than major sins is for two reasons. The first one is that innovation is connected to actions. And it's connected to the person's actions in the sense where the person gives himself the authority and the right to come and to add on to the deen that which is not from it. And this, this religion is already complete. As we said, Allah says in the Quran, And also Allah says, Allah is the one who legislates. And he's the one who makes these rules and regulations. So for you to come and to add on to the religion is you doing istidraq on the sharia, saying that the sharia left off something that was needed. Number two is a matter connected to the person who's doing it, which is that he is trying to get too close to Allah by something he's not even allowed to get closer to Allah by it. Because what we know is that Allah is only pleased with what? Something he legislated. Because the definition of ibadah is what? Ismun jami'un. لِكُلِّ مَا يُحِبُّهُ اللَّهِ وَيَرْضَى مِنَ الْأَقْوَالِ وَالْأَعْمَالِ الظَّاهِرَةِ وَالْبَاطِنَةِ Speech and action, whether that speech is external or internal, in which he subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with and he accepts. Allah is only going to be pleased with and he's only going to accept something which he, uh, he subhanahu wa ta'ala he uh, sh uh, sanctioned and that he prays subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the author brings seven evidences for this chapter. Now what you find is many Muslims are fighting and they're arguing with major sins when innovation is growing in the community. And from the innovations that we see recently manifest in the land was those who committed the atrocities in London, who killed innocent people. This was innovation that was in them. This is what? Bid'ah, innovation. And the author, Rahimullah, is going to state that this had come from what? I'tiqad fasid. These people believed they were getting closer to Allah. Where did this come to them from? Not from the Quran, not from the Sunnah. It came from innovation. And innovation is a part of the religion. Man amila amala laysa alayhi amruna fahuwa? Rad is rejected. So we ask ourselves, has the Messenger والسلام, ever, has he ever done that to a land where he stayed in Mecca, مثلا? We find that that's not from his sunnah and that's not from his way. So this becomes an innovation. And so that's why it's very important that the people are taught to stick to the Quran and the sunnah and to not bring in anything that is not part of it. And the author is going to bring an evidence, evidences for this. Seven evidences he brings to prove this point. The first evidence is in Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bi. Allah does not permit for anyone to associate partners with him. Bid'a is a form of associating partners with Allah as the author is trying to use. Because <coughs> the person is getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in an action which he himself has done. 